Thank you, everyone, for, um, for being here today. Uh, we have arrived at, uh, at a moment unlike any other um, in the history of our peoples. And um, I, for one, am, am deeply, uh, deeply grateful to our people and, and deeply grateful for the leaders that, that we have today, um, both those in positions of, of uh, elected uh, leadership amongst our nations, uh, uh, and the councils and the chiefs, and I can't overemphasize as well uh, that the leadership of the people, the grassroots, uh, as uh, they are so often referred to, uh, this is the strength of our nations. Through decades of advocacy by our people, uh, by the leaders that uh, uh, we have today, uh, and those who have come before us, uh, we have been unwavering. Generations of our leaders have delivered the same message to successive federal governments for over a century. Governments need to understand that our resolve is absolute as Indigenous peoples of these lands here. And we recognize as well that we are a part of an in international, a, a global uh, Indigenous movement uh, to take our rightful place in our respective territories. From the battle against the destructive federal government white paper back in 1969 to the struggles to win Section 35 in the Constitution in 80, to the Charlottetown debates in the 90s, to our efforts to make effective the recommendations of the Royal Commission 16 years ago, we have never wavered. Our voices have always been clear. Continuing attempts to undermine our resolve to divide our people have and always will fail. Today, our work in preparation for the meeting with the Prime Minister on January 11, 2013, stands on the shoulder of decades of Indigenous leadership. Our demands are backed by one Supreme Court victory after another. And I myself have experienced uh, in exchanges with the courts as I've battled uh, with my people for our fishing rights to be recognized, sitting there and having a Crown lawyer look at me in my own home territory and say that you, as the Nuchon of peoples, with a plural, do not exist as a peoples. And we know what that concept means, both uh, in international law as well as in relation to the relationship that our people struggle with today with Canada. Today our people are standing up from coast to coast to coast. It's created uh, an opportunity for the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. We acknowledge and give thanks to the awareness that has been brought through Idle No More, as well as to the actions of Chief Spence, Elder Robinson, and Jean Sock. As leaders, our responsibility above all is to care for our peoples. And we have heard their voices. Governments need to understand this will not change. We are absolute in our conviction and in our determination to achieve our rights. We will fulfill our responsibilities to our ancestors and to future generations. Every day that we fail to act means a loss of opportunity for our citizens. Every day wasted means another First Nations child life is wasted. It's time we broke through the paralysis and the endless broken promises, and it's time to act. So let me summarize at the highest level, and our discussions continue with our leaders here. The demands of our people of the First Nations is the need for fundamental transformation in our relationship with the Government of Canada now. That we need real remedies and real change for our people now. And we need action in particular for our most vulnerable citizens.